Hey folks, Rob back with another Rob Place for Shmuptember. And well, if you know your 16-bit action, you probably recognise this intro. Because this week we've got Warp, developed by Thalion, and published by Grand Slam in 1990. Now, Thalion, of course, are best known for being a bunch of amazing um, Atari ST demo coders, so depending on what side of the fence you lie, you might get a tad worried. But this actually comes out really well. I just thought I'd like to to leave the full experience. Um, I should probably give a quick head up is that because I played this on my A1200 through WHD load, Warp's um, install is marked as experimental. Um, I'm not even going to try and boot the original floppy. You know, it's probably so many cool tight timing loops to, to do its thing that it uh, probably wouldn't run properly. So let's get the intro and let's, let's load it. I think that's just the, the language that I... And here we are. So, the basic storyline is um, you're you know, some crack hot shot thieving pilot who stole an experimental fighter craft. And, uh, and as you've escaped from Earth, turns out a bunch of aliens called the Myrons, a robot android race, have basically purchased a giant force shield generator and turned it into a weapon to trap the Earth. Like, you escaped, and your job now is to basically find it. Find their the homeworld of the creators and basically get them to um, help you shut it down. But the Myrons have planted a whole bunch of anti-warp generators which keep you trapped. So let's dive in. Get to stage right now. So this is, I mean, I, you may, I hope you don't disagree with my description of the shop. But let's just watch the intro which just shows what happens and we've escaped. That's the shield starts to fall over Earth. So at each level you arrive at your planet you need to take out a series of power generators which allow you to then attack. You attack those power stations and then you can attack the anti-warp generator and move on. So, so the idea is you, you've got basically rotational controls. Now this thing is, oh, is a map. So you can fly into it, you can't shoot it too many times. You've got your map on screen, and you can see just how the area is divided. The other thing to worry about is power. Now, I'll probably get to the power station here. Oops, there it is. And this thing we're about to run into is a power station. And you can see we've got our energy bar filling up. So, all right, now we're done here, let's hit return and we bring up this screen. So big thing is we've got our laser systems, our blasters. So our lasers are, Rapid fire weak shots, they're good for taking out enemies, they're not good for taking out buildings. The blasters are slower, they're more powerful, and they're good for buildings. You've also got your shields, which when you run out of shields you die, and you've got your fuel, when you run out of fuel you die as well. On the bottom left you can see your energy gauge, and on the bottom right you've got um, your weapon indicator, alpha lasers, B for blasters, and your low shield, low fuel warnings. So now we've done a first pass of stuff, let's refuel again. The next thing we have to do is now go find those four power stations. So, again, up, down, control your speed, left, right, turn, fire shoots your current weapon, which in this case is the lasers, and then you can use space bar to toggle those. Which are pretty good key, which is a pretty good control combination. So, okay. Big thing is you've got to just avoid all the hazards. So, this is top corner. All right, there's the entrance. Now, we've just got to be careful here, because there's so many things that will kill you because it's a 16-bit shooter. <laughs> See, I'm weird because I actually like I actually like these kind of multi-directional sh scrolling shooters where they're not like you're not on a fixed path. You've got to explore an area and battle. I kind of like. Them. I don't think many people do. But uh, oh, do not switch. I did switch. Okay. All right. You can see that is the first power station we have to take out. So let's go take it out. Boom, one power station down. Oops. Now there's some obstacles like those walls you can hit and you're safe. There are other obstacles you can't hit because you will die and hopefully I won't do that as I play. Let's go through. There's a power station, let's go refuel. No, that's not the power station. Oops. That's probably my frustration with this game, if anything, is because it's written for the, for the ST, you know, the ST does not have the scrolling grunt of the Amiga. I'm sorry, Atari fans. 
But this is the kind of game that... I'm sorry Atari fans, but let's be fair about it. There, are, You've got the CPU grunt, but the Amiga had the scrolling grunt. Um, because of that, you've got this... The play field is reduced quite a bit. And for me, personally, I feel it takes quite a bit away from the game. I really wish the play area was larger. Just because it'd be easier to see these things. I also wish that... Um, accessing the map was wasn't reliant on being in one of those terminals because that would probably help as well so let's grab we're fueled up just top the last couple of things up music strat i think it comes over pretty well to the amiga um you know and hippel did it of course had done it for the st's ym chip and actually he was responsible for the amiga port funnily enough um, oddly enough, he doesn't get credit on the title screen, only on the only in the instruction booklet, which I found really weird, actually. Oh, this is this is nerve-wracking. All right, we're gonna have to transfer some shield energy before we do anything. This one's just tough because of all those little critters. But there's the power generator, so let's switch the blasters and go for it. All right, that's two down, two to go. All right. We have to put more into the shields. So that's the thing I like. I like the fact that this game, whilst it's not as frenetic as a normal blaster, it just has this, the whole mechanic around having to manage your fuel, your shields, and your weapons actually really makes it unique. I don't think, you know, when I think of a lot of, you know, blasters that do this kind of thing, you know, what comes to mind for me is, like, Thunder Force 2 on the Mega Drive. And I know a lot of people didn't like that, which is why Thunder Force 3 was just a normal, normal horizontal scrolling shmup. Alright, we've topped up. So for this first stage, thankfully, it's all in the, the top four corners of the map. And the other thing I think is really awesome with this game, which we'll see when we actually finish this first stage, is you can actually save. So, and honestly, I love that because I could sit there, finish the first stage in this review, and I'll probably go back and play it later. You lose, you do lose points for it. It costs like 2,500 points to, to do that save. All right, now this thing you have to avoid. That gets deactivated when you actually take out all the generators. And we hit the wrong spot anyway. Yeah, that's the other, the other, like, a lot of the problems I have are minor. And they're really just an artifact of, you know, coming from the ST. And it's, like, I wish the background graphics weren't the same sort of, like, ooh, muted palette. Oh, oh let's get trained. Let's go raise the shields. Um, I'm going to drain some laser energy for now. I can probably get away without that for a while. That's right, this... Now, there's a whole bunch of, like, sort of a meta strategy. Because if you take out things like these installations that I just took out. And then, of course, we can go through and hit the map complex again. So I want to see the maze that we've got to fly through to get to the this generator. But, yeah, um, as I was saying, you know, I'm really just, you know, one of the a minor thing for me is I really wish the color palette was a little more vibrant. Um, Instead of these sort of shades of red. I mean, we're on Mars. Sure, and Mars is the red planet for a reason. Oh, crap. Good job, noob. Um, the good news is that was a power station. And I just destroyed it. But not the, not the power station you have to destroy to win the stage. Rather, the power station will give you more fuel. Now, this is where things get tough. These little spike things, you have to blast them. You can't actually hit those. Um, as you, you, unsurprisingly, die. Ah, oh, crap, and I hit the power station. <laughs> they got you, but don't give up. All right. At least you restart at the, at the, the spawn point. So I can go hit this up and refuel my supplies before I go back for another run, before I go back for another pass. 
very few lasers, very few blasters. All right, we're doing another pass or heal. And one more pass and we'll be good to go. See, so yeah, I I never heard about warp back in the day. You know, back in the day, my meat, my Amiga running friends didn't have this. I think it wasn't the kind of game they would have liked anyway. I mean, so I never really would have had a chance to check it. I remember hearing about when I started messing with Amiga emulators and you know, hearing about you know, Thalion's works. And for the longest time, you know, the only version of the game out there to download was like a terrible cracked version that was glitchy and buggy and just did, ooh, close, we didn't crash that time. Okay, let's get out of here. That's three down. Ooh, three down, one to go. Um, so I'd never heard about it back then, and, and I remember just this buggy version that couldn't actually play. So it was one that I never really bothered checking out until um, I got this copy in the big after an adventure last year for big lot where I went with some friends to sort out and. I finally gave it a go recently properly and read over the docs and it's like, ooh. And I realized how how really good fun this game is. Um, that being said, I don't know how common it is. Whether it you know, might be easy to get on the ST or not, but I should really dig it. But more importantly, we're up the top corner again, so that's not where we want to be. And this is this is that this is like the problem I have. As I said, this is the problem I have just with the just with the and it's not a major problem it's it gets frustrating after a while that's all I mean I really wish that you could access the map without having to be at, at a map terminal because especially when you get lost like this and you just want to you just want to find the, the place to recharge which I've just found You just get frustrated. It's like, I just want to re repair my ship. All right. The good news is now we're down to the last. The last little um, target. So shields need to be recharged. Fuel needs to be recharged. Let's top up and we'll get out of here. And now this last one, I left this one last for a reason because this one's pretty darn tough. But technically, the scroll is pretty zippy. Um, hence why I think that this game would probably... I have to admit, in playing it, I really would love to have seen a proper Amiga version. And it is actually really impressive just for the scrolling, because you know, the ST did not have... didn't quite have that capability that the Amiga did in that regard. Uh, we're almost out of blasters, we're out of reserves. This and that. All right. Got those blasters. Just got to be careful with when you're refueling that you don't accidentally hit you don't actually start shooting to those aliens surrounding you because if you do you'll blow up your power station if you blow your power stations up you can't refuel and so you'll die now that's where we gotta be so let's take this one nice and slow I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's oddly funny, but I'm sitting here, as I'm, as I'm playing and switching controls, I find myself, I find myself where it's like, oh, I need to use um, the space to, to toggle, and I'll jump to my laptop doing the recording and not to my, not to my Amiga, it's really weird. Ah, and a blasters. Let's drain some lasers, refill the blasters. Lower the fuel. 
All right. Yes! All the power stations destroyed. Now let's go for the anti warp gen. I think what I'm going to do is... Um, now, we're shields are low, so I'm going to drain some more lasers. And I'm going to drain some blasters and put all that into my shields and my fuel. So because now I have to get to the anti-warp generator, that, if memory serves, is located at the top, um, the middle top of the stage. So I need to go and find, there's the map. So let's go refuel. Last refueling pass. You're probably getting sick of me doing refueling passes. But I guess I tend to be a slightly more conservative player. And again, um, the, the anti-warp tower isn't, um, you have to use blasters. Okay, that's a common thing. You know, lasers are for taking fighters. Blasters are for taking out the buildings. All right. Some great music all up. I mean, I'm quite a fan of the tunes. I like, I do like the, um, I have to say, I do like the title theme on the ST version a little more. It's a little more enhanced, like sample. It's actually a really good tune. It doesn't have the same feel on the Amiga version. And while it does feel a bit of a lazy port in some parts, um, I don't know if I left it long enough on the on the title screen, but some of the translation is a little little broken English, which wasn't in the ST version, which I always find really odd. Okay, now that's it. Let's go around. Have I got this? No. No, my mistake. What I'm looking for is actually the bottom middle, at the top middle. Okay. Got my stuff on. That's you're gonna see them earlier. There were those, there were those little, little like uh, up down arrow things, and they've all been destroyed now because they were. Now what we need to do now is just. Is just get down here. Got to be careful. Now that's the anti-warp generator. Fill it with blasters. And we're done first stage. Cool. So now, our first stage is done. We got to warp to the second one. And the game changes at this point. So you can see up the top, you've got a bonus counter, uh, L gear, an L Y for light years, and you've got your shields. And the idea here is you just need to nap the tunnel, which is basically using pilot controls. Fire gives you a burst of speed, so you've got to sort of like, you know, control your speed to not hit the, to not hit the walls, like I'm doing terribly. And basically get there to get the most bonus. And I think if you run out of shields, you make it, but you just don't get bonus points. Which we're doing all right. We've got what, 12? Yeah, we're under 10 light years, so we're almost there now. And I just love the effect here. I know it's beautiful, so we've made it. I didn't get a perfect bonus because I kind of suck. But I got my bonus points, and we're now in the next solar system. If you wish to save your game, press Y, otherwise hit the fire button. So you know what? I'm going to save it, and I'm going to call it here. Um, you can sort of get the idea of how warp works. And I think all we know it's a really good game. I really enjoy it. I've been enjoying playing it now. I enjoyed playing it a little bit when I got to, to groups with it. And it's well worth checking out if you've got an Amiga or an ST. I, you know, from what I gather, it's pretty much the same on the ST. It's probably slightly faster because it's a, you know, doing that. And it's probably not as squished vertically. Um, so with that, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. September is almost over. We'll have another, another cool episode next week. Uh, if you want to look forward to that, do tune in and watch it um, and subscribe. And also leave a comment or a thumbs up with your, your thoughts and feelings. You know, they really help people finding the stuff and helping it come up better in searches and whatever else. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.